never coming in. It's still hot, blazing well, hot out there. And, and you have to ask yourself, in, in Briscoe's case here, is with the cloud cover that's moved in and the track starting to cool down a little bit, has that brought his car to life more so? I think it's more the pit stop. I think they just did a brilliant change on that car on a pit stop. It just changed the complexion right now. He's looking like the man to beat in the first did. No way was he the one, it was Dixon. Well, you never know what can happen. I mean, you just look at, keep that momentum going, and there you go, man. But you, you know, you never can, you never know what's gonna happen. Let's remember Motegi there. I think of Briscoe back in Long Beach. I think of a year ago when Dixon spun under yellow at Watkins Glen. <laughs> you know, I mean, you just, the, the unexpected can, can always happen. There was a 1.6, second lead that Ryan Briscoe has on Dario Brown, Scott Dixon and a 6.8 second lead on Dario Franchitti. At TireRack.com, we don't just sell tires, we test them on our unique test track. Our results are honest, unbiased, and as real as it gets. Use this information to help decide which tires are right for you, your vehicle, how you drive it, and where you drive it. It's not just a test track, it's truth serum for tires. And it's only a tire rack, the Tire Rack Test Track. One more way, Tire Rack is revolutionizing the way you buy tires. TireRack.com, research, buy, deliver, install. Welcome to Brazil. Food and wine. Furniture. Jewelry. Technology. Biofuels. I'm Tony Canan. Experience the energy of my Brazil. for everyone is here. The Insight, designed and priced for us all from Honda. From the moment they dropped that puck, 20,000 screaming fans. This is our year. No. and become a four-time champion. Ryan Briscoe earned his money just a few seconds ago. We talk about him running high. This is a little too high. Mm. It, but, but what it is, it's confidence. That's confidence in his race car to run that high and split those guys. Mm. Anytime you see dust a flying, that's because no one else has been there before. <laughs> <laughs> You're track sweeping. <laughs> Here he comes on the right. Ooh, wow. Look out, baby. <laughs> wow. Whoa. You know, and, and, and you know Graham there, all he was worried about was, was racing Schechter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he had to dump the throttle, and there goes Briscoe on the high side. All right, fellas, we're getting into the next pit window, and here's my analysis. First of all, the temperature is starting to drop. It's gone down by three degrees. Track temperatures stay pretty much the same, but the humidity is starting to go down as well. As the sun gets a little deeper in turn number one, these cars are going to tighten up just a bit. And from the looks of things, what we want to watch 
watch this time around with the championship contenders. How long does Briscoe go before he picks as compared to Dixon and Franchitti? Does he lay one down or does he play it close to the best again? And Jack, remember, we shouldn't forget this, that Ryan Briscoe pitted on lap 45 and Dixon 48, Franchitti 50. That's a five lap spread. So Briscoe is going to have to at some point save fuel. And you wonder if he was just laying one down to try and confuse the competition because he did have the fastest in and out laps and the fastest pit stop. So it's going to be fun to watch and compare this one, Jan. Agreed, Jack. And I think that when your car's not right, hit early, get it fixed, figure out how, about how, how to make the next pick window later because the Penske team certainly made the right choice because that car came to life. Yeah, I, and I think that's maybe why they were a couple laps early is because he wasn't happy with the balancer said, okay, forget it, get in here now and let's fix it. Ryan Briscoe is the leader of the race and in fact has put about three seconds between himself and Scott Dixon, but he isn't getting accomplished what he needs to accomplish because as they run right now, he and Dixon are tied in points. And remember, Scott Dixon wins all tiebreakers. There's second place Dixon. It's worth mentioning that if by some chance it stays green and you don't get a caution, you see Castro Neves come in, he, we would assume last time, if he's pitting already, he was the last to pit on the first round, he may have short filled. Robbie. And remember, he had that quick pit stop earlier, but also he might be trying to get a little bit more off sequence. They said they can make up the difference of the pits. We're about to find out. I looked up to Tim Sendrick and said, are you making any changes? He said, no, no changes here. So they're going to try and get a full load of fuel. You'll see if anybody goes up to the wings, Brian, Brian Briscoe has already gone by. Five seconds, six seconds, they're holding him, getting that full load of fuel down at 7.4 again. It's a good stop for Elio Castro Neves, and now he's just a little bit off sequence from the rest of the crew out there. Maybe he's looking for yellows later. So what I was starting to say is that if it were to stay green, it's not a guarantee that Ryan Briscoe can make it in the same number of stops as Dixon and Franchitti because he played that first window really early. Now, of course, a caution throws that all to the wind, but at the moment, he is playing a little bit behind in that regard. Yeah, and, and we talk about Elio being the first to make that second round of stops. You know, Elio's not in contention for no. the championship, so it doesn't really matter. Just fill him up, put some tires on him, get him out there and run, and let's see how he can play into, you know, Team Penske challenging Team Target Ganassi at the end of this thing. Going to the inside of Ryan Hunter Ray, who competed in the Rolex Grand Am race here at this facility earlier today. It is Ryan Briscoe with a two second advantage on Scott Dixon and a seven and a half second advantage on Daria Franchitti. Kanan and Patrick are the top five. Briscoe in the number 16 Penske machine pulls in the leader right now trying to be the leader at the end of the day and win this championship. He was told no changes, just four tires and a full load of fuel. Lindy Jackson, you're up there with the target team. Yeah, Scott Dixon, and he was just complaining that he was loose at the entry. They told him in the corner to make a damper adjustment forward on his own. And watching his pit stop, and guys, maybe you saw something different. I didn't see them make any adjustments, so that must have worked. Dario Franchitti now leads because he did not stop. And Ryan Briscoe went 50 laps before he pitted. He's now back into the same, obviously, pitted at the exact same time as Scott Dixon. He got himself back in the same window. Yeah, so so whatever those guys are going to do, they're just matching each other right now on the same sequence. It'll be interesting to see just, we saw them both leaving pit lane with probably about 15 car lengths between them. Where are they going to sort out lengthwise after about three or four laps on the track? Now for Dario, if you're going to push, this is where you earn your money. This is considered, in a way, an in-lap. Any time that you haven't pitted, these laps right now, that could be what he needs to yep. close the gap. He's just got to stand on it yeah, right now. With no cars in front of him, well, as we say that, there's some traffic in front of him. That's the time to take advantage. Like you say, just keep that throttle pinned as quick as you can. Tony Kanaan is running in second spot. He also has not made his oh, second pit what stop. What a break for Dario. Unfortunately, he's got to follow Kanaan. Now, Kanaan is no sluggard coming was, around pit road. I was going to say, still, it's a car ahead. Just to be behind TK there, it's, I don't think he's going to hold him up that much. That guy knows how to challenge it. But that, again, that pit in, when you transition off that 18 degree banking to the flat there, it's, it's a tough deal. 
number six car just comes through turn one. Dario Franchini is pulling up into his pit box right in front of Chip Ganassi. We know that at the last stop, he had a wing adjustment. He was complaining of understeer and oversteer. Well, this last segment, he was complaining of understeer in the middle of three and four. They told him the same thing as Team Payton Scott Dixon was pulled to make an amber adjustment. Scott Dixon coming out of turn four as Dario and Tony both come off of pit lane. It looks like Ryan Briscoe takes the lead back. Well, we heard there from Lindy, great reporting, thanks, but that Dario had more understeer, which makes sense because they took wing out of that in the first stop, but at least it's not having two things happening in the same corner with the car being loose and pushing. So, so that is a good thing that it balanced the car that way just to have a push or an understeer. Past the halfway point, no caution so far. The average speed of this race is in excess of 200 miles an hour, 200.7. One of the nice things about working at Versus, well, when there's something happened on the racetrack, we break out of commercial. We'll go back to it right now. You're watching live coverage of the Firestone Indy 300 live on Versus. I've driven a lot of different cars, but two things never change. No one demands more from their car than me, and nothing protects under the hood better than Peak. Peak Long Life Antifreeze is formulated with an advanced organic technology to protect any engine of any make, any model, any time. If you can drive it, Peak can protect it. And when I drive it, it better perform. Peak Long Life Antifreeze. When you peak, you win. $50 unlimited nationwide talk, text, and web on the new Motorola Clutch. Boost Mobile. Unwronged. You guys need a lift? Yeah, I get about 23 on the highway. But can it crush cars? Surprisingly fuel efficient. Ride ready. The pilot, only from Honda. Honda is proud to be the engine supplier of the IndyCar series. Tonight, the PBR Columbus at 8. And at 10, the WEC Interim Lightweight Championship. Live on Versus. The United Football League. New teams. New towns. A new day is dawning in football. The United Football League on Versus. Today, you have this long season, you know, 17 rounds, hard fought championship. And, and basically it comes down to the last race, three drivers, and basically whoever's the best guy in Homestead is the, is the champion. Well, Ryan Briscoe had things going his way, but now Scott Dixon is back in the lead, as you saw on IndyCar nonstop on Versus. So Scott Dixon resumes the lead with Briscoe running second and Franchitti seven seconds behind in third position as we go down to Lindy Thaxton. Here with Chip Ganassi, we've heard uh, Dario struggling with some understeer, right? What, what's his condition right now? Yeah, I mean, it seems we made a little fix on that. It helped, helped him a little bit. It's an interesting situation with the three of us. You know, there's only three cars on the lead lap, so uh, mixed with some interesting strategies here. Are you cool as a cucumber right now? 
It's a little warm here in Florida. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Thank you, Chip. Jack? Lindy, as we watch this battle with Scott Dixon at the head of Ryan Briscoe, while they drive for different teams, remember that they were teammates for that man you just spoke to when Ryan Briscoe crashed so badly in Chicago a couple of years ago and had to battle back from severe injuries. It was Chip Ganassi who, in essence, fired him, released him from competition. His teammate at the time was Scott Dixon. They're down under teammates, one from New Zealand and, of course, one from Australia, and they have remained close friends. When I talked to the two of them yesterday about the prospect of battling one against the other, they said, hey, mate, that's what you're supposed to do when you're neighboring countries from down under. <laughs> well, it doesn't get any better and as pure as it can be for these two guys battling for the championship, both being from down under right now. And amazing to me how much after every pit stop, it just changes the speed depending on the changes that are made. Frank Keating, we heard Chip Ganassi talk about the fact that we think we made it better, but I think they're going to have to make it yeah. one step better if he's going to be up there yeah. with well, the other two. Or just riding on board with them right now. But remember, after that pit stop, we had Briscoe that had about 15 car lengths on Dixon when they left. There as he rolls off at turn four, you can see just the sun setting, a little bit of glare reflection. Probably not too bad right now, but as that sun keeps shifting around, it may get right where it's, where it's in your visor and you just can't tilt your head enough to, to block some of it. By the way, we uh, are sorry to report that Marco Andretti is out of the race with a brake problem. Hideki Moto and Dan Weldon are running seventh and eighth. Now, when Chip Ganassi said that it was an interesting strategy with only three people on the lead lap, Dario Franchitti was the last of those three two stops, so he could probably get away with just one more stop. The other two will have to save fuel if they want to do the same. They're going to have to save fuel in a big way to kind of get up to that point, don't you think? Uh, just a bit. By the numbers, they just have to save a little, and we've seen people do, we've seen Briscoe do that earlier on in, the, in an earlier stint. And Jan, you would have to say that historically Scott Dixon has done likewise. He is the master at making fuel. One of the reasons why, and he says that the reason is, he doesn't always go to the conservative fuel position. Instead, he uses his throttle response on his right foot to the accelerator. He's just smooth and easy. Meanwhile, as we watch Dario Franchini, let's remember, he went a little longer but still battles that understeer. And with the track conditions, Jack, right now, and you talk about how Dixon saves that fuel with balancing the throttle. Right now, these guys aren't running flat out around this racetrack. The conditions are so tough around here, they're having to breathe out of the throttle and squeeze back to it, and that's where he's magical in making fuel. Now, Robbie, when we were talking during the break, you brought up a great point. When you see the two lead cars, we certainly saw Dixon was dominant right after the stop, but that's on fresh tires. So usually halfway through the stint, when they're half-worn, then we find out whose mid-stint balance is better. Maybe Briscoe's going to come back and yeah. challenge again. Well, and, and that was Dixon's fastest lap. Right when he overtook Briscoe, that's the fastest lap. It was lap 105 that he had set. So, obviously, he took advantage of those fresh Firestone tires. Did they fall off? We're going to find out for him. And right now, Briscoe's actually running faster. He's yeah. catching them. Yeah. Those in the grandstand and on TV can keep track of the championship contenders because they have the championship rings, the white walls, on their particular cars. They are the top five after 120 laps. If you know passion, you know my name. If the roar of a race car gives you goosebumps, if you believe that no one ever remembers who comes in second. If you're into checkered flags, chugging milk, burning rubber. You know my name. If you've ever pressed your nose to a chain link fence to get a closer look. If you own a pair of earplugs. If you know Andretti, Reha, and Unser. You know my name. You know my name because I've been here from the very beginning. 
as vital today as I was over a hundred years ago. A hundred miles to go. I am a powerhouse. I am running wide open with no finish line in sight. I am the fire that never goes out. You know my name. I am then, I am now, I am forever. I am Firestone, and I am proud. I'm running low on energy. This is left, this is left. Three, two, one. Get your heart ready. A new energy is going to choke you. The unique energy of Brazilian products and services. OurEnergy.com and discover Brazilian products. So on IndyCar nonstop on Versus, we have a new leader again. Ryan Briscoe has charged ahead of Scott Dixon. Wow. Well, right before that, we talked about the idea. That was about halfway on the life of those tires. So it was about the 25 lap point where we saw Briscoe go by Dixon. Dixon obviously was very happy with his race car when he came in and had fresh Firestone tires on there. So Jan, as we we're saying, as they keep putting more laps on it, Ryan's car's a little bit happier as they run through the fuel window. And guys, while Ryan Briscoe and Scott Dixon seem to be pulling away a little bit, the advantage over Dario Franchitti in the third position, Franchitti with that understeer in the car, Chip Ganassi and his team have decided they're going to play the fuel mileage game. Remember, they pitted about almost a total of five laps later than Briscoe and Dixon, so they are now conserving fuel. So, Jan, you were spot on. If he's going to win this race, he's going to do it if it goes nonstop screen to checker, and they get to go a little bit longer than everybody else. It's Dario Franchitti. If it were to stay green, Jack, he could pit on anywhere between lap 149 and 151 and make it to the end. At the moment, the two leaders are going to have to save fuel. Otherwise, they'll be on pit road twice. I, they would never do that. They would have to turn it back to also just make one stop. But there's no question Dario, at least from a fuel standpoint, is looking good. And, and what a great strategy right now. And did you notice right there, we just saw the shot of that car. Did you see the, the glare and reflection that was coming back into yeah. the cockpit there? That was definitely a blind spot. We listened in on some traffic conversation between Scott Dixon and the team. Dustin Briscoe on one fuel strategy. Dario on a different one. We'll just have to stick with where we are. We'll see how it plays out. Should I lead back? If you can stay in front and lead back, it's okay. Oh. We would still need 36, 36 to be, uh, lead the most. 36 to lead the most. I'll be 36. Right now, Dixon has led 70 laps, Briscoe 45, Franchitti 13, and Castro Neves 2. But it's 45 and counting yes. now for Briscoe because he got the lead back. Robbie Floyd. Uh, Roger Pinsky is a little too busy to talk to me right now, so Matt Johnson pointed his direction. Matt, is the car just not happy early on in that run and it's starting to feel a little better the later you go in that stint? It seems that way. It seemed that way in the first stint as well. Ryan took over there towards the end of the stint. He's feeling really, really comfortable. What's he been complaining of, or are there any complaints? I know Roger's really kind of been a cheerleader right now, cheering him on, telling him he can do it. Oh, he's doing all the coaching he can, and he's doing a fantastic job at it like he does every race. So what can you do early on? You need to lead those laps, and right now Scott has that advantage. What can you do early on in that stint to kind of make up for some of that lost ground? Well, we're trying a few things here. Our engineer is figuring a few things out, and we're trying to get the car to work as good through the whole stint, of course. Um, right now, I mean, we're, you know, it's small stuff. It's down to tire pressures and wing angle and things like that. But, uh, you know, we're pushing to get the most lead laps here as well. We need it. Um, in a tie in points, Scott wins it on most wins in the season, so, uh, I mean, we're, we're going all out here. You can see how important it is to be strong on both ends of the stint, Jackaroo. 
Robbie Floyd, let me break down for you how Chip Ganassi had an assistance in figuring out what to do in fuel strategy. Look to the far right side. You see where underneath it says EMC? Well, right now, they're looking at the telemetry on Dario Franchini. But over on the side of that monitor, there is a switch. They can switch it over, and they can see Scott Dixon's telemetry as well. They switched over. They looked at it, saw the fuel consumption, guys. And they made the decision that we might not be able to beat them except by going on fuel mileage. Interesting, huh? I, th I think it's a great move. I mean, it, yes, interesting, but great. If, if they're really not thinking they have the speed to keep up with what Dixon and Briscoe are doing, go with that fuel mileage. Well, when you have the fuel calculation software, <laughs> and wow, they're split in the middle there for Scott Dixon. He needs to keep that momentum up. And that was also some nice courteous driving that was Sarah Fisher that stayed low and left the middle lane open. But yeah, nice just, for shooting the gap. Yeah, just get on, lean the horn a little bit, guys. Here I am. <laughs> right. Championship yeah, contender gap. coming yeah. through. Yep, yeah, here's the horn. Yeah, honk, honk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is. That easy. If you have the data calculation software, and I have a version up here we use to no. calculate those pit windows, <laughs> but the one thing you always have to do you have to guess what fuel mileage someone has. But as Jack was just saying, they're racing for a championship and they can flip a switch and they can look at what their championship rival yeah. is using for fuel. They get the real time numbers because they're on the same team. Yeah, they're, they're not guessing right. what that other guy's getting. And, and we heard from that conversation riding on board when Scott said, do you want me to lean it out? They said, only if you can keep him behind you. So we don't know what he did, but obviously he was running full rich on that thing to lay down the laps that he had. He's fallen almost a second and a half behind Scott Dixon has. If it were me, and I'm Scott Dixon, I lean it down. I don't take a chance on not being able to make it in one stop. I think he's got to go with Dario's strategy now. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can't, if you can't make it in two stops. If you can, one person makes one stop, you make two, you're toast. Well, no yellows right now. And Eki Boto and Dan Weldon are running close together on the track. Here is Franchitti going to the high side of Weldon. He's running eighth and Hideki is seventh. Those two cars are two laps down. And by the way, we're on lap 139. 149 is the key number. Yeah, you've got to get to 149 to make it in one stop. So we're, we're in a 10 lap. And, and we know when Dario's the one guy that can get to that yeah. point right now. Ryan Briscoe leads the Firestone Indy 300 from Homestead Miami Speedway. Dixon and Franchini follow. On lap 143, it looks like Ryan Briscoe, the number 16 Pinsky machine, is about to come in the pits. The number nine, the target chip of Ganassi car of Scott Dixon, just behind him. So the six crew ready to go over the wall. Gary Prawl, the right rear outside changer in practice yesterday. think it is. Those two who just stopped, they're going to have to stop again unless there's a caution. Dario Franchitti as the leader is playing that strategy that Chip Ganassi called out. They're going to stay out. If they make it another four laps, so, they're good to go. So if Dario Carr still maintains the pace, he really can win. The, if, if we don't see a yellow, yeah. if we don't see a yellow, he can win this race. If he makes it four more laps before if, he if, if, And we think he can do that yep. because he last came in on lap 100. Yep. There has never, don't want to jinx anybody here, but there's never been an IndyCar Series race run without a caution. Uh -oh. And there have only been... <laughs> That's the end of that stat. <laughs> there have only been two races that have averaged in excess of 200, and we are on that pace right now with an average of 202.051. And if you would have been back in your hauler doing strategy with your guys with the tough track conditions and the heat here, you would have banked on yellows at lap 20, 25. And, uh, and there you go. Let's just, like you said, our... Our prediction is that Briscoe will have to pit at 192 and Dixon at 193. <laughs> this 
this is getting good. Yeah. But well, you, so but you just said, talked about the yellow. No, 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 no. That's, there has not been a race this year that you haven't at least showed the graphic or said there's never been a caution, and poof, there's a caution. <laughs> that seems to happen every time. No, not this year. Oh, that was a moment for Dario. He got up there high and got, got a wiggle. Trying to get to the high side of E.J. Viso, who is running in 19th position. And, and Frank Keaty still running on older tires right now, used up tires, so they just don't have as much grip, which is part of the life and build that Firestone puts into those. He's still running pretty good times. Now he, he can dip down now, as he does. He can pit now, and he's in the window. This is the lap that he can make it to the end. And we don't see him behind here, so he must be on pit road. Yes, yes there he was. Yep. So Dario will come in for wow, how, his how, final pit stop. How interesting is this? Yep. It only works if it goes caution free. Right. Yes, that, <laughs> well said. All right, Lindy. Well, we heard Chip Ganassi say earlier that after that last stop, he thought that the understeer would be better for Dario. And just a few minutes ago, we heard him say, I feel like the car is getting some more oversteer. Chip had just told me a couple minutes ago, we don't plan to make any changes, but as Dario was about to pull in, he asked for an Well, like we say, so that half turn out, what that's going to do, that's going to ensure that car doing one thing through those corners three and four. And that is he wants the front of the car to lead, the front to have some cushion. So just give me a little bit more cushion, take a half turn off of that. Briscoe with about a second and a half advantage now on Dixon. Problem on pit lane as Danica Patrick and Dan Weldon appear to have had a meeting with Danica's car headed in the wrong direction. Go, 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 go! Crew works to get that car. Obviously, he hasn't had service yet. They're laying out the yep. sticker tire, so it's coming in that it happened. Danica was coming in and welding out. Yeah. That is why the right front tire changer, which is a great example right there, needs to have a sight down pit lane before you send a car. Just because you have everything changed, you, you can't send them if it's not clear. No. As much as you want to as that, that right front guy, you can't in that scenario. Ryan Briscoe has led 62 laps, Dixon 70. So only eight laps to go, and he'll then be in the running at the, at the moment <laughs> of that two points. And he's got a pretty good gap on Dixon right now to, to get that deal done, to get those two points. But all that will go out the window if they have to make a green flag pit stop. Dario Franchitti is going to be looking good. <laughs> In the catbird seat, yeah. Dixon goes under the Robert Dornbos in the number 33 car. Who spent the time between Japan and here at his home in Monaco. Now Dixon up to the high side of Sarah Fisher, who's 21st. The Dollar General sponsored machine. And you can tell she's still fighting, just that car having a happy balance. She was just kind of easing into the throttle coming out there, but staying on the low side, you know, letting the, the quicker guys get by on the high side. Let's update you guys on Danica Patrick. The crew has gone to work on the Boost Mobile car. They have damage on the inside rear suspension from that collision. They're going to have to change the uprights. You can see that they're working on it right there. Tough play. Riding on board with Graham. And look at him saw the wheel. That's that very flat part of coming in pit road. Graham Rahal, by the way, has just moved to fifth in the points with Danica's problem. And Graham Rahal is about to get his final pit stop of the year, Jack. Remember, this is the first time that Graham Rahal has raced here in Homestead, Miami. He crashed in warm-ups last season, his rookie year. They go to work, make the changes on the McDonald's car. Graham Rahal has improved his oval track performance all season long, off and away in 7.9. 
60 miles an hour all the way to that line right there, and you could hear him trip that pit lane speed limiter and light the tires up. And a very good year for Graham Rahal, and I'm sure there'll be other great years ahead of him as Ryan Briscoe leads Scott Dixon by two seconds now. And Dario Franchitti, the only other driver on the lead lap, and he is almost 16 seconds behind. Two to go. Yep. This will be one of them. We have in no way decided who's going to be the champion, so we've still got 39 laps to go. Boy, this race has gone fast, hasn't it? Man. Incredible. Average speed of 201.4. So what's the scenario now? Let's say Briscoe gets to where he gets the two points for leading the most laps and wins this race. What's that scenario do if Dixon's in second? Well, he'd be the champion if he wins, but the if, problem is he's going to have to hit pit road again. Well, no, I know, I know that. I'm saying in that scenario. But the fact that he's gotten these two points, right, if he, got the, if he gets these two points for leading the most laps, that gives him that cushion. He could win out. Yes. yes. I mean, yes. again, like you say, the way it looks right now, both both Briscoe and Don, um, Dixon, Dixon are going to have to come in for more fuel. Unless there's a caution. That's, <laughs> we have to always put that in as the disclaimer. The right. moment that there's a caution, they can make it to the end. We understand that Briscoe would win by four if that happens, Robbie. Thank you. So he will lead the most laps. Ryan Briscoe, he leads over Dixon and Franchitti back in a moment. The Firestone Indy 300 on Versus is brought to you by Honda, the engine supplier for the IndyCar series, and by Apex Brazil. To learn more about our Brazilian goods and services, log on to experienceourenergy.com. the conditions. Firehawk tires with Unity technology. Only from Firestone. Hybrid for everyone is here. The Insight, designed and priced for us all from Honda. Welcome to Brazil. Food and wine. Furniture. Jewelry. Technology. Biofuels. I'm Tony Canan. Experience the energy of my Brazil. 